Oh wow, look, Caitlyn was wearing another pair of overalls. Two videos in a row. Yes, you caught me. <laughs> I have fallen in love with overalls and I will wear them any chance I get. Overall, I love overalls. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, this is a, uh, you know, a little extra video for you guys because um, we have just surpassed the two month mark in our Sprout New Skills Make Along and I wanted to react to some of the things that you've been working on and maybe this would encourage some of you guys who haven't joined in yet uh, to join along on our Make Along. Um, so if you don't know what the Sprout New Skills Make Along is, I will give you a synopsis and I'm sure regular viewers are already tired of me <laughs> tired of me talking about it using the same, you know. So what the initiative of the Sprout New Skills Make Along is, is that we are taking all of spring, so that was March 20th up until June 20th, and we are going to uh, dedicate this time to working on um, a new skill. So whether that be starting a new skill entirely, um, like for me, for example, um, I didn't know how to crochet until March 20th. <laughs> so I've taught myself how to crochet or teaching myself how to crochet. It's a process. Um, so it's either something brand new like that, or you could take something within your current craft and, um, for example, I use knitting all the time in all these examples. Uh, if you've never knit a pair of socks before, or if you've never knit a sweater before, now's your time to do it. Or even so, if you don't know how to work with cables, or you don't know how, uh, or if you don't know intarsia, or if you don't know how, um, how to, you know, do a brioche stitch, um, now is your time to learn and to participate and to take the time to work on it, make something beautiful out of it or practical, but you can be both beautiful and practical, of course. Like these overalls, <laughs> they're beautiful. They're beautiful and practical. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what this make along is for. Um, but this was just a make along that I had on my mind for a long time and I wanted to do with you guys because that is kind of my uh, vision here for this podcast is that you can't, don't tell yourself you can't do it. Basically, uh, you have, if you have, if you can put your mind to it, then you have the skills to do so. Don't ever tell yourself you can't do it, uh, especially in crafting. Anyway, moving on. I figured that while we were here at our one month mark, I would take a look at what you guys are working on right now. And as mentioned earlier, maybe it would encourage other people to join in. We still have two more months. Um, yeah, we have two more months to go and that's plenty of time to work on something. Um, so let's get started. I have my laptop here and then I'm going to put some uh, pictures as we go through of uh, what you guys are working on. So let us get started. Uh, so the first one I want to highlight is the young woman who provided the name of this um, of this make along and that is Amanda of the Crafting Sparrow on uh, Instagram. Uh, so she decided that for this make along, she was going to knit um, a shawl in the round. So uh, she was making the Woodlark shawl by Fiber Tails. What you do is that you knit a shawl in the round and then you steak it like you would like a cardigan. Um, if you knit a cardigan in the round, and I found this to be such an interesting concept. So I saw that Amanda was going to do this and I was so excited to see how it turned out. Um, so she did end up finishing the shawl and here is the finished product and it is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Look at how beautiful this is guys. I cannot handle it. It's the perfect, um, it's such a beautiful, beautiful shawl. I can tell that it is going to be so super cozy. And, uh, and she says in this post that she learned how to steak, bobble, and make a finished edge, like a beautiful finished edge. And I believe that finished edge is a, um, uh, I-cord edge, I believe. Amanda did such a beautiful, beautiful job with this shawl. I am blown away. Um, 
she attempted a feat that is very scary to me, <laughs> which is steaking. Um, I know I'll get there eventually. Um, I don't have a sewing machine. I know you can steak with, you know, by hand sewing, but um, one day I will steak a, a garment. Um, maybe not this year, but maybe next year. I know I will. I'm not gonna tell myself I can't do it, but um, it is it is pretty daunting to me at least. I know people say it's scary to steak, um, but she did a beautiful, beautiful job. And I'm, I'm proud of her. Amanda, you did such a great job. And uh, another project that she's working on, she's, she's uh, um, including two projects in this make along. She's crocheting a bralette. And look at this beautiful pose. The, the spring and summer aesthetics, I'm loving it. I'm living for it. <laughs> They're, it's beautiful. I love the color that she chose. I, I commented it like it's boho chic, definitely. We're gonna see a lot of that this summer. I mean, we do every summer, but I know in 2020 crocheting got really, really popular, especially with the youngins, the young people, the Gen Zers. Um, so I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of crochet uh, garments this year. So you're keeping up with the trends, Amanda. <laughs> Next we have a uh, uh, Instagram user Marie and the Stars and um, I only recently just discovered Marie and I love her aesthetic as well. <laughs> so her entry into the make along is that she is um, teaching herself how to embroider and um, I love love this pattern that she's doing. This is so beautiful. Um, I'm really again loving the aesthetic. Um, the plants and the little stars, like the leaves. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. I can't wait to see the finished project or product, Marie. Beautiful, gorgeous. I'm loving it. <laughs> Dine of Liveren Knits is also doing embroidery and um, she's put in a Put in, she submitted <laughs> two different examples of embroidery that she's doing. Um, the first being uh, this super cool um, astral, spacey, um, colorful embroidery kit. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fun. It's funky. It's, yeah, it's bright and I really like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's awesome. It looks like in here you fill in um, the white spaces. It looks like we got a cat. <laughs> Yeah, a cat peeking in as well. Um, that's super, super cool. And I like the little embroidered stars as well. Um, I think they're awesome. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna hear me say the same, um, the same words all the time. Awesome, beautiful, super cool, fun and funky. You know, <laughs> like, um, my uh, vocabulary is not very vast. I apologize. Um, but anyway, so we got uh, this this fun, spacey looking one, and then we have this cute little, um, <laughs> it's like a little fox, and it says, let it snow, and the fox is doing a little um, snow angel. And that is so sweet. I love it. What a cute little, um, I mean, it's not, you know, strictly related to Christmas, but when I think let it snow, of course, I think of the Christmas song, let it snow. So I could see that, you know, being framed or, you know, put up as Christmas decor or just a general winter decor um, in your home. And that is absolutely beautiful. It is so cute too. I love little foxes. All right, another project we have is from Rainy Day Reads and she has supplied many um, works in progress pictures. And good for you, pal. I'm horrible at <laughs> keeping up with stuff like that. So um, it looks like she is making, or it looked like, well, she's already finished, but going through the, the, the journey, going along on the journey with us, uh, she is um, knitting a, um, a head wig, um, the owl from Harry Potter, the snowy owl. And of course we see a little foot to start. And then uh, we got a little half of a body. <laughs> It looks awesome. So even at the halfway point, it's so cool. It's so amazing what we can do with string, <laughs> you know? So weird that like, you know, ultimately all these projects start off as string and then they turn into something beautiful, you know, slightly coming together and we got, we got a pair of eyes. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool to see all these come along. We got another one. 
It does look like an owl. It looks like an owl. He looks kind of angry in this picture. <laughs> it's so funny, but sometimes owls look angry. But it looks amazing. And his little head wig. He's so cute. I love him. And here is, it looks to be the final product. So beautiful. I love what you did with the wings. I love, um, cause it, you know, snowy, snowy owls. They're not just full of white. They have the black speckles on their wings. It looks awesome. I really love him. He did a great job. What a fun little project to have in your, in your home. And you know, it seems to fit your, your bookish aesthetic. Next, we have my friend Valerie. So she decided to make a pair of socks using Magic Loop. And um, people seem to love ma Magic Loop or they hate it. <laughs> um, I have given it a try. I see why people like it and I just can't get the hang of it. I feel like it's too fiddly for me, um, but some people say knitting with uh, four DPNs is too fiddly for them, um, <laughs> but that's okay. I had to quote one of my friends, Lucy, uh, She's like, you'll have to pr pry my DPNs from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> I love them very much. So Valerie's doing an awesome job on these socks. Gorgeous, a beautiful Hookah Canyon pattern. Um, yeah, and I love the color too. Such a, such a gorgeous um, pumpkin spice orange. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And we have the finished product. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. This is, um, these are the uh, Sunnyside Drive socks. I love the cable work on these socks. And that heel is perfect. It is a perfect heel. Gorgeous. I can just look at them all day. Valerie, you did an awesome job. So, so beautiful. This is her first project in the Mal, and we'll see what she does next. We have another friend of mine, Ina. Ina. Uh, she is uh, teaching herself how to crochet, just like me. Um, so it looks like she bought a little kit with like some cute little, um, little mini skeins of yarn and a nice little workbook. Super cool. So it looks like Ina finished a project, and that is a little, uh, like little envelope pouch, like little coin purse. <laughs> And it is so cute and her stitches are beautiful. They are so beautiful. They're so perfect. I'm really, really loving it. You did such a good job, Ina. It's better than anything I've made so far. <laughs> it's awesome. And I love the color too. She says she thinks it will hold notions. I love it. What a perfect, perfect use for a perfect little pouch. So great. I can't wait to see what else you, you crochet up. We have another friend of mine, and that is Kelsey. Kelsey Garner of Nini Nakabi. And for, um, for this make along, she decided to learn how to spin, how to spin yarn. I, I asked her, you know, if she was hand spinning it, if she was using a wheel, and um, she said that she used a, um, it was an electric spindle, I believe is what the, um, the correct term is. It was called an e-wheel. Okay, that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm horrible with terminology, but her, it, it turned out so beautiful. She did such an awesome job. And the roving is just gorgeous too. Like so cool. I never, um, like I would like to learn how to spin too. I do have a drop spindle. Um, and I would eventually like to learn how to spin on a wheel, but I always forget about um, electric, um, electric wheels. I think they're super, super awesome. And they produce beautiful, beautiful work. Like, look at this. Kelsey did such a beautiful job. She makes such beautiful works of art, works of fiber art. If you've been around here for a while, you know how much I rave about Kelsey's yarn. How beautiful it is, how beautiful her colors are, how soft her base is. It's just, yeah, makes beautiful works of art with yarn and with colors. Next we have uh, Tiffany of Wool and Bee Knits. She looks like she's making a sweater. Okay, so all over the top, um, it is it has color work, cables, and lace. 
talk about <laughs> a project you know there's so much involved in there but that is so cool cannot wait to see the final product she says it's a summer top so we got the first that's the first work in progress and here's the second work in progress picture i love the combination of colors here wow look at that the late look at how that's incorporated the lace the cables and the color work that is so beautiful so so beautiful i cannot see or i can i cannot see i cannot wait to see the final product i'm like trying not to look ahead at other people's <laughs> renditions um with a sweater but that is so so cool i'm looking forward to seeing the finished project and yeah tiffany you picked some beautiful yarn for this project gorgeous gorgeous colors next we have pauline of pauline knits and it looks like she is teaching herself how to use a drop spindle and look at you guys are such beautiful photographers <laughs> i'm so horrible at taking pictures but look at that that is like a post straight out of tumblr <laughs> and i mean that in like the in the kindest way possible if i you know back you know 2014 caitlin would have reblogged that picture so quickly <laughs> oh it's, it's such beautiful beautiful photo and look at that roving Ugh. looks so wispy and pretty it looks awesome so awesome job pauline Linda's also teaching herself how to do embroidery. And what a beautiful embroidery kit. I'm, I'm loving these uh, plant motifs and like the leaf motifs. Uh, that seems to be all the rage nowadays. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm not, um, not angry about it. I'm living for it. Um, beautiful. I love it. So it's not, so glad, I'm glad I tried it, but I'm not sure if it's my jam. That's okay. <laughs> That's totally okay. I mean, as I'm learning to crochet, like I'm learning it, but I'm not sure if it's also my jam either, but I don't know, maybe I'll learn to love it. But yeah, it's very cute. I love the color that you picked for the leaf. As mentioned before, my friend Lucy, she is, she decided that she was going to work on a brioche and it looks to be, a, it is a two color brioche. I'm loving her color combination. The greens and the blues are so, so, so pretty. So I believe, I believe that she finished it, but just didn't post a finished object picture yet. Um, but yeah, so pretty. I I think it looks awesome. Like, look at look at it's a really cool technique. It really, really is. Um, and yeah, like she said, and uh, she, cause she joined in on our um, monthly maker meet that I've been hosting, uh, and she said that brioche is not nearly as hard as everyone says it is. And I believe her because apparently I was doing brioche for a project and I had no idea it was brioche. <laughs> I just thought it was just a different technique and people were like, oh no, that's brioche. Like, oh, people are so scared of it. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful, it's stunning. Again, love the colors. I'm so sorry, there's different ways of pronouncing names. I don't know if it's Johanna or Johanna. But so she, for this make along, it looks as though she is making a summer top. Uh, she's, uh, for this technique that she's learning, she's learning how to do raglan in increases. I love this color. These raglan, in raglan increases are beautiful. So, uh, uniform and pretty. Love how they're looking. I can't wait to see the finished product. Here's a, ooh, here's another, um, update. Ah, gorgeous. Looks as though you're gonna split for the, the sleeves pretty soon. So pretty, I love a raglan sweater. But again, I'm really excited to see the finished product. I, yeah. <laughs> she says uh, the yarn is a uh, silk. So it's really glossy and smooth. So, so pretty. So for some reason, one of the posts didn't come up in the hashtag. <laughs> and that was my friend Lindsay of O under slash K. And uh, it looks like she is gonna start doing punch needle. And um, I'll put a picture right here for you. And um, yeah, punch needle seems to be a really um, you know, popular trend too. A lot of people are making, you know, little rugs and stuff. Um, I've seen, you know, a couple of videos have been recommended to me of like people using those like um, rug making like machine things. They're like, they kind of look like a, um, like a, uh, 
<laughs> a nail gun kind of. Um, they're pretty fascinating, but obviously this is the more analog, <laughs> smaller version. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what she puts together. Um, so yeah, and uh, Lindsay, if you have any updates, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to see what you put together with that and uh, keep me posted. Then we have Haley of Better Kitten Crafts. My neighbor over from Washington, over in Washington, DC. She's two, one state over. <laughs> um, she is making uh, socks. So this is her first time knitting socks and they have turned out beautiful. I'm loving the, the colors, the stripes, self-striping yarn. Those are always so much fun to work with. And she did use her, um, uh, the highly recommended um, a Magic Heel sock pattern by my friend Judy. And um, that heel, like we can see in the first picture, it's perfect. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous heel. Love her finished object picture too with the plants. Ugh, I love, I love it. Again, the aesthetic is everything. Loving the flowers and the succulents. Super, super pretty. I'm so glad that, you know, your first pair of socks turned out so beautiful. And I will recommend again, if you've never knit a pair of socks before, go check out Judy's Magic Heel sock pattern. And it will change the way you think about knitting socks. And you'll never go, you'll never want to go back. Because there's, you know, hand knit socks hit differently. <laughs> They truly, truly do. All right, and speaking of Judy, the last entry that I'm gonna talk about is my dear friend, Judy. And her entry into the knit along was that, or the make along, I'm sorry, was that she hand whittled a crocheted, a cro <laughs> I wanna say needle. She hand, she, she whittled a crochet hook. Like, look at this. How amazing is that? So, so cool. She has a little Swiss army knife and she whittled this crochet hook with a Swiss army knife. It's just, wow. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm blown away by her abilities. This is so, so awesome. She did such a great job. I hope it worked well. She said it only took her an hour. So awesome. I hope you get a lot of use out of it. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. I'm so happy and I'm so proud of her. She did a great, great job. You, Everyone's done an awesome job. So, that, so that's what everyone's made so far. You've already seen what I made. I don't want to show you again. <laughs> but, um, but if you haven't, go check out my last podcast episode. I love seeing what everyone is making in this, in this make along. I am just blown away by everyone and their, and see, you can do it. <laughs> now I hope that this make along has helped show you that you can do it. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Um, you, you know, you have the ability, you have the skill um, and you know, what you make is beautiful and um, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, all right? <laughs> My Mr. Rogers moment, you know. <laughs> but all right, I just wanted to make this, uh, it was supposed to be a little video, but um, <laughs> not very little, probably end up being a half an hour. Um, but I'm excited to see what the rest of you guys have to make. Uh, if you were planning on making something else for the make along, you know, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. I hope this video has encouraged those who hasn't, who haven't joined the knit along to join. Um, and you know, let's continue to, you know, build each other up and encourage each other throughout this process. Um, so I'm going to leave it here for you guys. Um, thanks for this quick little visit. Um, you know, sometimes it's the short visits that are, you know, the most fun. So we'll leave it here and I will see you in about a week and a half. So stay safe, everyone. Keep knitting and I will see you all later.